In this video, let's have an introduction to the basics of synthesis. So synthesis can be called as the very first step of the backend flow or the physical design flow where we convert the RTL, which is a high level description of the behavior of our design into a gate level netlist, which is made up of actual gates, which are something that physical design tools can understand. So for example, we can have a simple high level description of the logic like this. But when it goes through the synthesis flow, this high level description will be converted into an actual AND gate like this. Besides RTL, there are a few other inputs which are required for the synthesis flow. We need the SDCs or the design constraints for synthesis. SDCs will have your clock definitions, your IO port constraints, your timing exceptions like false paths and multi-cycle paths and many other things which we will discuss in detail in another video. Another most important input for the synthesis is the dot libs or the standard cell libraries. The dot libs have the information on all the cells which are available to us for use on a particular technology node. So for example while converting this statement into an AND gate the synthesis tool will pick up an AND gate which is defined in the dot lib. Another important input which might be needed for our synthesis flow is the floor plan def file. Note that this is shown as a dotted box here because a def file is only required if we are doing physical synthesis. We will talk about physical synthesis in detail in a later video. So if you are not talking about physical synthesis, then the three most important inputs for synthesis will be the dot lips, the SDCs, as well as the RTL. Note that when we say RTL, we are talking about the RTL, which is the functional description of the design, as well as the UPF, which is the power intent of the design. Now let's discuss one of the frequently asked interview questions about synthesis. Let's say that in our RTL, we have a statement like this where A and B is assigned to C. Then how does the synthesis tool know which cell from the dot lib this expression should be mapped to? So in the dot libs, any combinational cell will have an attribute called function, which will basically define what that cell does. So based on this function attribute, the synthesis tool knows that this is an AND gate and it can be used to map the expression in the RTL like this. Let's take another example where we have a statement like this where at every positive edge of the clock, A and B goes to D. So by reading this statement, the synthesis tool knows that it needs to insert an AND gate as well as a flip-flop. So it will go looking in the dot lib. It will find the AND gate based on the function A and B. So let's say for the AND gate, it ends up picking a cell called and 2x. Now for any sequential element like a flip-flop, the cell description in the dot lib will have a special section which starts with ff. So based on this section, the synthesis tool is able to identify this cell as a flip-flop and this flop can be picked to implement the RTL description. Note that a synthesis tool has to consider many more things while picking a cell from the dot lib. If there are some timing issues, it will try to use high drive strength cells or it will try to use LVT cells instead of HVT or SVT cells and other things like that. We will discuss synthesis flow and all of its sub steps in a detailed video later.